Hello everybody. It is Terrific Tuesday with Pastor Ken Maxey. I'm sitting outside. It's a beautiful day today, kind of going old school. Um, using my uh, my old Facebook and uh, this is the back of my house. Uh, not not the prettiest thing. I'm actually I am actually sitting in my chair or sitting in the chair that my dog usually sits on when she's waiting to come inside. So, welcome to my backyard. Welcome to the back of my house. Um, Glad you could join me. Uh, we're going to probably be pretty, pretty brief this morning. I will be boarding an airplane here shortly, heading to to sunny California. Although I believe it's going to be more sunny here than it is going to be in Southern California. Actually, what we saw is that it's going to be in the 80s here, and it's only going to be in the 60s uh, over there. But we'll uh, we'll have fun anyway, uh, just to kind of catch some of you up on here um i last uh, last december i completed <coughs> excuse me i completed my uh, master's degree in biblical studies and, and uh, i had um taken three and a half years to do that uh it was a lot it was a lot of work it was good for me uh learned uh, refreshed up a lot of my bible studies you know i went to bible college I managed to fit uh, four years into seven years and when I got done I said there's no way I'm ever going to go back to school well lo and behold as uh, uh, as I was getting older I realized I should probably go ahead and uh, and if I was going to do it now would be the time so I need to go get my master's anyway so I completed it and uh, we're going to go out Sarah and I are going to go out I did it online at Veritas Veritas University Veritas International University it was online uh, Jason Davis went through it so did Nick Pierce and uh, and I completed it and uh, never got a chance to meet my professors so I thought I would go do that anyway so that's where we're heading good morning to you Dorothy good morning mom and dad always good to see you guys glad to jump on you guys are jumping on here we are going to look at Judges chapter 12 it's going to be the last part of it, verses 8 through 13, I believe, 8 through 13 or 14. And uh, I just want to briefly talk with you about, about those verses. Hi, Pam. Thank you for jumping on here. We're going to be brief today. Uh, one last th one, one joke for you guys. Uh, Rolanda sent this in to me. Uh, the question is, is, why can't Jesus wear any jewelry? Why can't Jesus wear any jewelry? Because he breaks every chain. He breaks every chain. That's the joke. <laughs> Hi, Mary Kay. Good morning to you. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Good. So good to see you guys on here. Judges chapter 12, last part of that chapter. Good morning, Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Campbells. Hi, Elaine. We are starting verse 8, Judges 12. After him, that's a key phrase, after him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons, and he gave away 30 daughters in marriage, and brought in 30 daughters from elsewhere for his sons. He judged Israel seven years, then Ibzan died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, there's that phrase again. Hi, Debbie. Good morning to you. Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel. He judged Israel 10 years, and Elon the Zebulonite, not to be mixed up with Elon Musk, died and was buried at al Jalan in the country of Zebulun. After him, verse 13, after him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Parathonite, judge Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 young donkeys. He judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hill Hillel, and the Parathonite, died and was buried in Parathon in the land of Ephraim in the mountains of the Amalekites. So here we are, we're wrapping up Judges chapter 12. We, uh, we just got done um, going through the life of Jephthah, who was the judge, and uh, he, he uh, had to go to battle with the Ephraimites because they came in after everything was secured and they were complaining that they weren't called in to help with the battle. And in reality, Jephthah had called them and they just wanted to come in and get the spoils of the war. But he was a very good judge, and he led them. He, he made a foolish vow to the Lord, and uh, that was a big mistake. But other than that, we don't know much more 
then he was a good judge and he was listed in the hall of faith in hebrews chapter 11. so as we wrap his life up we come to verse 8 and i notice this phrase in verse 8 verse 11 and verse 13 it says after him and it lists the next judge and then after him the next judge after him and that phrase just continue and so there's like this chain of succession that takes place after Jephthah and it all leads up to chapter 13 where we are introduced to Samson Samson's parents and we're going to talk about that hopefully next week now I'm on this trip and as you guys know uh, we're supposed uh, the traveling situations have been a little up in the air no pun intended but with flying it's it's the schedules can get off a little bit my plan is to be back around midnight Monday into Tuesday and then join you guys Tuesday morning but we'll see so I may or may not be here next week to talk to you about Samson's parents but as we see here there's a chain of succession uh, Jephthah passed it on to the next judge the next judge and the next judge and as you guys know, probably by now, one of my favorite verses is Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verses 1 and 2. And it reminds me of the very part, first part of that passage. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and run the race that Christ has set before us. So just that idea that we are now taking up the baton of the gospel and we are being cheered on by those who have gone before us. And I was just thinking this this past two weekends, I like to sh you know I like to share my personal stories with you guys. But the last two weekends, I've got to spend a lot of time with my my family and my parents. Two weekends ago, uh, I got to drive with my mom and dad out to Butler, Illinois, to a place called Love Package Ministries. And what they do, as many of you know, they send out books and materials around the world. Uh, Christian literature and Christian Bibles to around the world for free of charge and they deliver it to uh, mission fields and people uh, have a chance to read the, the gospel through these, these free literatures that are donated. Well my parents uh, now that's part of their mission to go and collect those items and many of you donated books and Bibles to to our book drive a couple years ago and we delivered those well anyway every once in a while I get to, to meet up with them in Kirksville and drive over there and you know I was just thinking about their life uh, started out in Chillicothe they were doing children's ministry uh, my dad was an associate pastor there then he took on a senior pastoring in around Kirksville area and just thinking of the influence that he and my mom had in my life that you know they turned their life over to Christ and and as a result they uh, were in the ministry and just that there are many times that they could have given up they could have you know people it's not easy working with people I don't know if you know this <laughs> for you who work in the retail business or with people it's not always easy working with people and there's a lot of times you can just throw your hands up and quit but my parents were faithful to the to the call that Christ put on their life and it was a huge influence on me and uh, and, and now I'm in the ministry but this last weekend we just had our third son graduate from Central High School and his plans are to study linguistics with the hope of being able to do Bible translations and and to share the gospel around the world in that manner and I was just thinking you know the chain of succession that has been passed down my parents found the Lord they turned their life over to him that's been a huge influence on me and as a result I was raised in a Christian home and in turn I've raised our boys Sarah and I have raised our boys in a Christian home but yet if that chain had been broken who knows who knows what would have happened perhaps my my life would have been completely different and we would have raised our boys completely different but that that um, that chain of succession that that cloud of witness that has gone before us that continue to watch us that now as uh, my parents and Sarah's parents are now cheering uh, Sarah and I and and um, our boys on yes they're still alive they're still with us but you know they're cheering us on and and some of you may not have come from a home like myself you know God has blessed me richly I I, I understand that and I understand that some of you have not had that that in your life and you've been raised in a godless home 
but here is your chance to uh, write a new script or to begin a new chain that involves Christ. And you have the chance to speak into the life of your sons and daughters or your grandsons and your granddaughters or maybe even great great grandsons and great great granddaughters. And you have a chance to speak into their life. Now they may not become pastors and missionaries and that's okay and they may not even um, come to know Christ in your lifetime but you can continue to be an influence in their life and you can be a cloud of witness around them by sharing what God has done in your life, by praying with them, by sharing the, the Bible verses that, that, you, that are dear to you. And they may roll their eyes and they may, um, uh, I don't know, they might shut down the conversation. They may not, not even let you pray with them. But you know, that is an influence that you have in their life. You speak it into their life and God's going to use it somewhere down the road and who knows it might bring them to Christ I encourage you you know we are all writing our story and it's after him or after her the the sons and the grandsons and granddaughters come along after we are writing the story along with God's help and Christ's help and we can be an influence and we are cheering them on so I just encourage you guys that uh, keep hanging in there it may be difficult but continue to share Christ with those in your life, especially your, your family, your loved ones, your friends, because God is still writing the story. He hasn't given up on them, and he can still use you in a mighty way. Even if you're retired, even if you're, you're, seeing, the, if you're seeing less days in front of you than behind you, he can still use you in a mighty way. Just keep, keep giving testimony about what Christ has done in your life. And great things are going to happen. I hope that encourages. I hope that helps you have a terrific Tuesday. Let's pray, and then we'll be on our way. Lord, thank you so much uh, for your word. Thank you for your testimony of, of these men who served you faithfully. And I know there are many women who say, served you faithfully. Even when it looked like it wasn't worth following after you, Lord, they continue to follow after you, and you continue to bless them. Lord, I pray for my, um, my friends and family out there that are watching here that are maybe perhaps going through a difficult time with people that they know and they, that they love. And I pray that they would not give up hope. That, Lord, um, they would hear the cheers from heaven, encouraging them to continue their race, continue to share the gospel and the good news with everyone that they know. And, Lord, we know that your word does not return in vain and that it goes out and it grabs the heart of folks and, and it plants a seed and sometimes it takes a while to grow but Lord when when your word is planted in someone's heart it continues to grow and it can and, and it can be used down the road and so we pray that you watch over uh, our loved ones that that don't know you or are, are struggling give them strength bring them back Lord bring your Holy Spirit upon them pray for those that are dealing with physical issues and health uh, and financial and emotional issues Lord watch over them keep them restore them um, just heal their bodies in the way that they need to be healed Lord we trust you in all these things we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace they are just so wonderful and amazing we praise you in Jesus name amen all right thank you so much for joining me in my backyard here I hope to see you next week if you think of it say a little prayer for us as we're flying uh, that we get back safely. Take care and have a have a terrific Tuesday. Bye bye.